This is Brother Ron, and welcome to We All Be News Radio and TV, the news free Dixie for the 21st century. Um, back to this pedophile bill. I just, I just want to say to you that there are a lot of people who have been told that they are gay for life and they can't change. It's all a lie to create a, a large enough number of people that the rich people who do this depopulation agenda can say that there's so many people like that. That's why it's LGBTQIAPEZ. And pretty soon they're going to add an N for necrophilia. <laughs> <laughs> you need, well, I laugh, but I believe that might be true. <laughs> yeah. well, 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 no, no, I don't, don't doubt me. If you read the law mm-hmm. that was passed, they're demanding uh, for special treatment and funeral parlors. Oh, well, what would you do in a funeral parlor? Mm. If that's just the language in the law. So many like you know, this happened in Memphis. I want, it, I want civil rights protection to screw Nancy Wilson's dead body. That's what these fools. Wow. If I I hit Nancy Wilson, how old was she? She was eighty one. How was it? Well, it was kind of cold. Like, like <laughs> you know. Well, Bill Cosby's a monster, right? Bill Cosby's a monster, but uh, well, Bill Cosby. Look at what they're doing for, what's his name, Weinstein. I mean, they've done everything except, you know, pay him for being sued by these women that accused him. Mm, boy, and also uh, Jeffrey Epstein, you talking about uh, that billionaire guy? Weinstein, no, I'm talking about the one from Hollywood. Oh, yeah, I, know I'm talking about Harvey. I know Weinstein, but Epstein guy too, though, the guy who got 13 months in prison. Yeah, Acosta, the one who's the Secretary of Labor. That's why the Hispanics are getting all the jobs. They mm-hmm. let this dude and, and let them rape everybody. <laughs> let him rape all these people. This is. I hope that all of these people get taken down. But you mm-hmm. see, if this bill passes, and I bet you, Epstein and them are giving money because Epstein and them will be off the hook. Mm-hmm. If this pedophile bill gets through. They'll be normal. Remember when smoking weed was the problem, and now it's legal a lot of places. Folks be smoking, they be smoking almost in the church, in the church sanctuary because weed's so popular now, right? Mm-hmm. It used to be to do that because, but it's normal. It's been legalized. That's how they want to do with this stuff, and it's going to be nasty. And I don't think people should go for it. I think that it's really foolish for people to let themselves be played like this. And I, I mean that, and I mean that with, with the heart of sincerity, that uh, there's got to be another way. And uh, I have to say this. Gay folk got plenty of rights. The, the existing laws cover gay people. I'm also sick and tired of this idea that black folks are so homophobic. Mm-hmm. After all, who was the king of gospel? Mm, James uh, Cleveland. Yeah, James Cleveland. James- yeah. Okay, who is James Baldwin? <laughs> and who's poet laureate of the black community, Langston Hughes, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I, and the, the black female mother of uh, anthropology, Zonia Hurston, she's a dyke, lesbian. Mm-hmm. I mean, Little Richard. Mm-hmm. Rudy Lewis, you don't know him, but you know the group called the Drifters. Mm-hmm. The first the big lead singer for the Drifters, one of the lead singers after Benny King died, um, was Rudy Lewis. He was a gay heroin addict. We've had all these gay black folks, um, Paulie Murray, the black woman who wrote Proud Shoes and Song on the Weary Throat. We've had black gay people have every kind of, what, Bessie Smith, my great-grandfather's side piece. We've had black 
Mar Rainey. We had gay black folk have everything, and they weren't getting killed like Matthew Shepard. And so some of these idiot uh, sellout sexuality codes who are allied with the white gay movement against their own black brothers and sisters um, run around and act as if black folks are the same, that are, that, are, that are same sex attracted, have just been completely persecuted and dogged. That's a damn lie. Mm. Um, the father of the Negro Renaissance, Elaine Locke, a mm-hmm. predator, homosexual. We can go on and on about notable people that were gay in our community, that had respect, that people dealt with, and life continued, right? Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden, now that these people want to make themselves into a minority group, and they've weaponized groups like Black Lives Matter and Black Youth 100, and any other group of sexuality coons that hate their own people's guts because they've got white lovers or they've got some peanuts, they get some chump change to betray their people in the black family. All of a sudden, black folks are just total homophobes. You've got that idiot. Who's the one that's making this movie? This is thing called the, uh, the uh, slave play. You have a little gay dude up at Yale. Mm. Denigrate black people. Who's the one that, uh, uh, the, the guy who did a precious, yeah, uh, Lee Daniels. Yeah, that cat. Lee, mm-hmm. who's confused, you're sick. Your father should have whooped your ass. <laughs> what are you doing? You didn't pay for your mother's shoes. Why should you have them on? That's dumb in the first place, nigga. Mm. You didn't buy the shoes. If your father bought the shoes for your mother, who told you you could wear them? So you're mad because your father didn't let you be a female. You weren't born a female. Lucky you had a dad. In fact, you're lucky your dad wasn't screwing you. Mm. All that beefing. All these folks who have a beef with their mother or father. uh, All these folks at Oprah, who's a liar, whose mother died. Have you heard about Oprah's mother dying? Well, what about Oprah? What happened? Oprah's mother died. To die recently? Yeah, she died recently. I heard like overhead. Uh, she wasn't telling us. She wasn't honest about her narrative, her life narrative. Um, I need you to have Oprah Winfrey's cousin do your show. Okay. My aunt, Kalia Clark, is Oprah Winfrey's cousin. She's lied on her whole family. Oh, I know Susan Clark was Oprah. Okay. Yeah, it was yes. This world is very small. Wow. We're all open to somebody. And mm-hmm. oftentimes, well, I mean, it's, it's mind-numbing. Mm-hmm. Who's what to who? Wow. Hmm? That's a, that's so, a, back to mm-hmm. pedophile bill, because I'm driving this, but, you know, I hope we... And, and as, So, what I want to make clear to people is that for this pedophile bill... You only need, like, what, 218 or 220 votes to get that thing through the House. If you have 199 sponsors before they've even taken the first vote, don't you think that they could get another 20 votes? hmm So th- they're going to get this through the House if we don't stop it, right? And I have to say this. Every single solitary coon in the Congress, with the exception of Marsha Fudge, Democrat of Ohio. I didn't think she had it in there. The one that looks like a gerbil with glasses. Yeah. But yeah. right now, uh, that's just, I love her. Thank you, Marsha Fudge. I, I remember when you were fat and, and you've grown, and the fact you had some backbone, you got rid of that uh, belly fat and it went to your backbone. I'm so happy. <laughs> You're standing up. I really like you. I really, you know. I regret all the bad stuff I said about you, psych. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you need to do a few more things and then I'll change. So remember what you said about how you're going to get everybody wealth and they need to watch how they talk to you. I remember that. But anyway, I'm glad you took up, you t- took a stand. Marsha Fudge is the only one. The woman that looks like, um, what's her name? Uh, Pope. Remember the movie that showed scandals? Yeah. You know that Kamala Harris looks like Joe Martin with the weave. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, that could be you her, know, yeah. She got, mm. now, 
uh, Cory Booker, he supported it, and all the others, Maxine Waters. I mean, she's been in Congress long enough to get a facial. Uh, can't mm. The one that looks like the Geico caveman, Al Green. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Benny Thompson. Uh, Bobby Rush. Danny Davis. They all for the bill. Every single solitary one of them, and you know what punk ass John Lewis did. Mm. The, what, you show me something that all those niggas in Congress have gotten online for, for black people in the last 10, 12 years, where every single solitary one of them was together for us. They do it for Israel, they do it for gays, they do it for illegals, and damn black people. Damn the Congressional Black Caucus. All of you niggas are failures. If we were truly progressive people or revolutionary people, all of y'all would be facing revolutionary justice. And I'm telling you what, (laughs) we already know what the verdict would be. All of y'all would be like looking at doing a long time or a guillotine or something. There'd be some major punishment coming to y'all. Mm-hmm. They need to hear this. They need to scare these people. It's, you know, we need a black Kool-Aid party to go up there and just yell and scream at them. <laughs> go by their headquarters and yell at them, call them, tell them y'all to betray the community. Black folk used to do that. And people used to, black people who were leaders would be afraid to not deliver for the people because the people would be angry. You know, I'm trying to make somebody mad enough not so much to hit anybody. But if they saw Maxine Waters saying, you know what? <laughs> Tell her, you know what? If I were a woman, I'd take your wig off and whoop your ass for the, you know. <laughs> you know and tell you know, how come you can't get a facelift? And all that money you're making selling us off, you could at least look good, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> stuff that people, these people should, should not want to be in public life because they're not serving us and we should make them fear us. If you won't serve or care about us, you should be worried about what we want to do to you when you won't do it. Right. And I know that sounds mean, but that's what we need to get. We need to have these Negroes like waking up in the morning saying, you know, you know, like I remember the time I met, I had an opportunity to work with Clarence Thomas and with Maya Angelou. Can you imagine working with both of them at the same time? Oh, that'd be interesting. Wow. That was an incredible day. Clarence Thomas came in the side door with security because Clarence Thomas is afraid for his life. <laughs> mm-hmm. It, it hasn't made him a better judge, but Clarence Thomas has a sense that black people are angry with him. Huh? Mm-hmm. And if he would have just walked down the street somewhere, some people would just roundhouse his ass. Mm. Just, can you imagine a flash mob? Let me draw his car and stop for him. <laughs> 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 he's, he's the one that's going to take a torture person. Who is he? Get him out of here. Can you imagine the brothers and sisters catching Clarence Thomas on, on, on Beale Street? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I'm, I heard this new whistle. I'm sorry. And if you got a knife, I will give a brick, man. Mm. I want to remember. This got to be memorable, right? Where's my, my camera phone? <laughs> right? <laughs> Can you imagine if Frank Thomas, you know, went to the wrong side of Memphis or went to West Memphis? Mm. Wouldn't that be nice for some of these little cool politicians? Like the ones that voted against uh, uh, criminal justice reform amongst them, Maxine Waters voted against it. John Lewis voted against it. A whole bunch of them. I independent minded when it came down to something that might, even if it didn't do enough, it did a little bit. Y'all won't do nothing. And then little Dorito face president at least does a little bit. And you say no to that. You know, that's like a woman that won't school her husband mm-hmm. but doesn't want him to have an affair. Hmm. I heard that. Well, I remember being in Tennessee, talking to a friend of mine about their husband, and they were saying, you know, my husband, this, that, and that. And my husband said, you know what? Um, actually, your husband cheating on you is doing you a favor because you've outsourced your sexual job, sister. 
if you were schooling him at least two or three times a week, he would need to spend money on a mistress. That's your cruise, your fur coat. That's a couple of trips to Red Lobster right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could do the budget. Let's sit down and make a budget for you. I mean, we can break down, you know, how many dollars per serving you would get if, if you were putting out. Mm-hmm. So the way I see it, you're a bad sexual business person. In fact, you shouldn't have a card. You see me, you would need wow. to be good at, a, at a, at home business. And in, in fact, I said, I said the bus is the first business. Mm. I mean, I mean, it's a little bit of stand. It's mobile, right? It's fungible. It can give you change. Mm. <laughs> so I'm being ridiculous, but you get my point. Right. I just, it's just very important for for people to understand that uh, we have some incredibly pathetic, despicable, traitorous enemies that are supposedly uh, representing our interests in the life of life. And these people will not change. You'll have to run them out of office. You have to do like white people did in the Tea Party. Don't respect them. When they come someplace, don't speak to them. Be mean to them. I know who you, I know who the f you are. You that that you that bitch that signed the pedophile bill. That's mm-hmm. who you are, right? Mm. Do you realize that happened to all these black folks in Congress with the way people yelling and screaming? People wouldn't like the stress, and they would quit being in public life because it was too stressful. Notice how white folks leave office; they can't stay as long as black people. Some of them, they get too much hate because white folks are good for hate. That's one thing they can produce. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're not babies, they're not making crystal meth. There's something that white people don't like that they're attacking. And mm-hmm. then they don't see anything that they hate, they'll make something. They'll make a mystery, like all their movies, something coming from another planet to kill them that they got to hate to get together against. Mm-hmm. White folks to hate something. My problem with black folks is there's nothing that we hate except for each other. Mm. Hmm? I, I mean, wow. we don't we don't hate malnutrition. We don't hate homelessness. <laughs> we we don't hate unemployment. We don't hate discrimination. We don't hate colonization. We don't hate any anything that's getting in our way. We don't hate diabetes. We don't hate AIDS. We don't hate Klansmen. Let somebody go shoot up a black church. They ready to forgive the person before his gun cools off. I bet you did Ross says, can I blow the smoke out of my gun before you forgive me, man? Mm. And look at how we hold grudges against each other over almost practically anything. And in fact, well, you're a certain color. I know you couldn't like me because light skin, are you so black? I know, right? <laughs> we, we decide before anything happens. I'm going to strip that out. You can't be, right? Mm. Oh, my God. So, and now we got this nasty pedophile bill. This pedophile amnesty bill brought to us by sellout black leaders. Do you realize if those niggas in Congress, and yes, I called them niggas, if they were to say no and tell Nancy Pelosi, go to hell, this bill wouldn't even be in action. And that's why I say to people, our suffering in this country is supported by the boule and the Coons and the Greeks and the Masons, they're all doing a thing. In fact, I think I mentioned Nancy Pelosi is looking at changing, putting term limits on chairmen within different Democratic caucuses. Do you know that the black Coons, all of them, who are running after Nancy Pelosi like a sucker fish? Have you ever seen a nature film? See a little fish? They hang on the shark or the whale. They're mm-hmm. like sucking off the dirt and the doo-doo mm-hmm. and off of the fish. That's how they make it. Mm-hmm. That's how you see the Congressional Black Caucus up on Nancy <laughs> Pelosi. They won't stand up to her for one damn thing. Mm. But the minute she says, I'm going to cut, not let people be chair, now the caucus, because it's something personal, because they don't give a damn about the masses. It's only themselves, friends and family. Or as they say in church, God bless we for and no more. Mm-hmm. Now they're mad at Nancy Pelosi. These same niggas in Congress didn't demand action for people in Flint. 
they didn't do anything about Katrina. I'll just tell you. I uh, used to work, as you know, with Cynthia McKinney, and Cynthia told me that Nancy Pelosi threatened the Congressional Black Caucus. If y'all do anything for the people in New Orleans, you're not going to keep your seats and or you're going to get in trouble. You're going to make the Democrats lose the election. Do not help the people in New Orleans. And the niggas obeyed. Wow. And I bet you she told them, don't help the people in Flint. Hmm. This is what, and the niggas there take this kind of treatment from this plantation marm. Uh, there are enough blacks in Congress now. They're almost 60, somewhere between 50 and 55 with the new ones that are in. There are enough of them to pick whoever they wanted to be Speaker of the House. Will they do it? No. No. Couldn't they even at least let Clyburn one time have at least two votes to see who'd get it? Would they do it? No. No. Those are enemies, folks. Those aren't friends. That silly one that looks like Muhammad Ali with the cowboy hat on, mm. Francesca Wilson, she does look like Muhammad Ali got a sex change. She should have got his money back. <laughs> that idiot broad. The only thing she's done, other than argue with, uh, with Kelly over the boy that got killed at Niger, you should have been in Africa killing black people for white folk. Sorry, dude. I can't say bye, Felicia, because he's the man. Mm -hmm. But um, all she's done is have a fight with Kelly and try to get legislation for her to be able to, for her to be able to wear hats in the chambers. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. That's to wear a fucking hat. Yeah, I had to cuss on that one. Okay. Wow. And, and just, it looked like a rodeo prostitute. It not look like nobody's leader. Ain't done nothing for nobody. Mm. And and all of them, they're coons. I'm just telling you. I'm not. <laughs> and, and, oh, my God, I got to go in. Oh, oh, my God, I feel spirit coming on to just talk about sorry ass on Lewis. I need to remind people that that little, the guy who, he looks like a person that has half, a, he's got a head that looks like half, like half of a nutsack. I mean, and, and maybe maybe they, they their personal life is because they're not good looking, and they aren't. <laughs> John Lewis is the biggest sorriest coon of all time. I mean, of all. I mean, if there was a walk on the Uncle Tom uh, star on the Walk of Fame, they would give his ass a galaxy. Mm. <laughs> He's a chump. He's a sucker. He's a dump. He he's an enemy to our people. He he keeps pimping the stuff he used to do. I mean, it's masochistic to run around celebrating how many times white folk beat your ass. I wish they hadn't stopped. Mm. He votes against this criminal justice reform bill, but his ass was a water boy a co-sponsor for the omnibus crime bill that locked up millions of black people, little punk ass John Lewis. All the Negroes that were mad at, 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 at Hillary Clinton, they should be, she wasn't elected when Bill Clinton did that. John Lewis was. Mm. So all y'all, you know, that want to be angry at Hillary, you know, you can pass some of that on to John. And he walks so slow with legs he has. <laughs> he won't get far. I mean, remember the Carol Burnett show and she had the, uh, what's this guy? Uh, I forget the, the comedian Conway. Mm -hmm. And he played Mr. Tudball. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, he's like a, 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 a ghetto mulatto, Mr. Tudball. It, he needs to go. He needs to get out of office. He needs to be run out of office. He's done nothing for Atlanta. He's done nothing for black people there. 
and all he does is help gays and illegals. And there's a little video, I think I sent it to you, where John Lewis said that gay marriage was the fulfillment of Dr. Martin Luther King's dream and his movement. Hmm. Do you agree? Uh, no. <laughs> John Lewis thinks so. I think they hear him. <laughs> They may have hit him somewhere else with the nightstick. I mean, to think that. <laughs> I mean, uh, come I on, think John James Lewis. Baldwin was thinking of that back in the day. That, that was the ultimate goal. <laughs> James Baldwin was out of the closet, and he could be honest. He's with white dudes. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't know where John Lewis is, but you know, people know where John, John Lewis. We know where you is, brother. Everybody knows John Lewis. <laughs> Everybody knows. I mean. You yeah, have a creepy persona. I mean, don't we looking like one of those little painted turtles? Remember, everybody had turtles back in the day mm -hmm. when we were young? Okay, a lot of people didn't know that. Well, before all these uh, digital toys, we had small, simple things we'd get. It looked like a little uh, box turtle, man. Mm -hmm. And and like a little, even a little turtle has a hump in it. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, anyway, John Lewis, all of them, they betrayed us. I already talked about Maxine Waters. I'm telling you. Whew. I mean, there's a place in California called Crater Lake. Mm -hmm. Man, if I could go up with the body of water, I'd pick her face. <laughs> 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 Whew, Jesus, help me. I mean, you need to step down. It's just, uh, you know that's not your hair. I would love to see what's under that wig, man. She probably got some tight, nappy, crispy hair. That's okay. It's natural. <laughs> she talks about that black pride, but she won't let anybody see how her hair is. Mm. She's as ashamed of her hair as she is of her people. Wow. Because if you cared about your people as much as you did your parents, mm. certain things couldn't happen. And yes, we need to dog these people. You know, it's I miss Richard Pryor. God knows I miss Richard Pryor. I I remember black community when we used to give people hell when they didn't do right by us. Mm -hmm. Even if someone I can't stand, uh, Ben Carson, oh my God. Him and John Lewis, I don't know if they both have like, if you put them together, I wonder what the IQ would be. Probably be negative. Right? <laughs> you have to take them apart for them to have some numbers on the board. I mean, just so this, <laughs> Where did he find these cones? I mean, there's just no dignity. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, forgive me. I, you know, I just have to talk about these people, man. And so I'm looking, at this yeah. bill. I'm looking at this bill, man. The reason this bill has to be turned out is that I was saying to uh, Minister Akbar Muhammad from the Nation of Islam that this pedophile bill will get rid of the Religious Liberties Restoration Act which means if I wanted to come into the nation of Islam, I told him, I could come into the nation of Islam if this bill passed. <laughs> Dressed up like a gay uh, cowboy with the chaps with my behind out, with silicon titties, and say, I want to be in the fruit of Islam, right? <laughs> and if they didn't let me in, mm -hmm. or they touched me, they would get hit with all kinds of Department of Justice. Things. So I just told them, they're going to do everything except make you sell pulled pork sandwiches up in Moss Marion if they get this thing passed. Mm. Can you imagine, Farrakhan? I told you so many times that we would have to change in the nation of Islam. We brought in the Church of Scientology, but now we're going to have to make a compromise with the gay people because they're so angry with the nation and our people because of our leaders and our standards of religion are very difficult for the people who are used to part in their butt cheeks for other men. Can you imagine Farrakhan said, there are going to be some people that are going to come in here and y'all going to say, minister, do you like it? No, I don't want them here. But the government has given us such a difficult time 
Obama opened up the Pandora box and all the gays have come out, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I can see Farrakhan just, we, we have to do something to change the morality of these people who come into our box. <laughs> mm. I can just see Farrakhan just like, oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> I can't do this. Right. Mm-hmm. You, you know, every church, every institution, every daycare, if you have a daycare and, you know, I've got a rainbow this and I'm a woman, but it looks like I've got a bulge in my pants and I want to work with kids, you better hire them. <laughs> you better you get food. Mm. And there's a quota requirement that they want. So when they have a trial, they'll get gays on the jury. Well, do you think that the gay person on the jury is going to vote against the person that had the, uh, the woman that had the, <laughs> the chick with the dick that didn't get the job in the all-boys school? Mm. Do you think the gays are going to be on their side or the school side? You know the answer. Those gays are going, <laughs> it's, we won't even be able to get justice anymore. This this is the end of life as we know it. Wow. Understand something. You can have acquired a church, and I can say I'm a, a transracial black female and I'm a white dude. And if I don't feel like the people are giving me a chance to sing, I say like, a, you know, Tyler Swift on, on Crystal Meth. I want to complain that I'm discriminated against at the church that I go to, or none of the black men want to take me out. Hmm. You understand this thing is bottomless to the perversity, to the insanity. If you are working in an office place, and that person is a dinge queen, a person that likes getting doodled on, and hmm. there's a little bit of doo in their hair, and they come to work, you better not joke about it, because they'll feel discriminated against. This is my orientation. Well, sometimes I do bow move right here. I don't get it all out right before it works up. So I want to be under. Right. This sounds insane, but this is where we're going. And the thing that really makes me angry is black people never got these kinds of immunities from the Civil Rights Act. Oh, it gets better. They'll be able to demand credit when they show up. Credit. Money, loans, just because you, you suck a dick. Wow. Do you, do you understand? And on top of that, I can get your money too because my gender identity and all that, that becomes legal. There'll be a whole bunch of people that will be black men that are white women or whatever. It'll be whatever. whatever. There'll be no one that's actually trying to be who or what they are. We'll be able to, to, to handle this. And we got to tell, this is, that's because it's nothing but white privilege. It doesn't have a thing to do with sex. This is white supremacy from the perverse side of things. Huh? Mm. So that's why I've been bugging you, talking to other people, saying, we got to stop this pedophile bill. Mm. We don't need it. And by the way, let me just get to it. Because of the gender identity, I told you there's so many hundreds, the minor attracted persons, if they even get that thing through, that's going to be the grounds for all sorts of laws to be overturned. And it's going to get wild. And you know, who can't afford lawyers? Black people. Exactly. And whose elected leaders won't stand up as black people? So who are they going to hit first with all this? Us. Mm-hmm. If we don't fight this, we're dead. I don't need to uh, burn up any more of your time. You got so much to edit. I wish I could be more um, entertaining. No, and talk to but this is sort of like whoa. And by the way, but there's a, there's hope in this. This is the one thing that could unite our people to fight for the first time some people that will fight for the children, for the unborn, for the ancestors, for those that are yet born. Come here, cat. 
yeah, yeah, this cat is determined to disrupt my 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 um mm-hmm. my interview. Come here, come here and, and interrupt the thing. Come here, selfish. Don't make any noise. <laughs> Remember she did that? Just making a noise, started singing <laughs> and it, it interrupted the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, I like dogs sometimes because you know how to keep cats in check. So let me see now. Is there anything else that we should talk about? Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm just tie into like the, the Kevin Hart thing. I mean, we just thought oh, about Kevin that Hart, what, in Hollywood. Well, Kevin, Hart, Kevin Hart should have stood by his guns. Look, when these people are petty, they're jealous of Kevin Hart, they were going to find something anyway. What they're doing, the same folks that are saying, you can't have any religious beliefs and you can't have any religious standards. They've got theirs. Theirs is, have you ever said anything about gay people that wasn't laudatory? You're the enemy, right? Mm. Yet all the while they're calling for tolerance and acceptance. And this shows you that they're hypocritical, that they're two-faced, that they will always move the goalposts. Pretty soon it'll be up in the damn stands. There's no limit to them. It's bottomless. You have to fight them. Kevin Hart should have stuck by his guns. And his career may already be over because these people are mad at him. But let's be honest, he's made enough money. Hopefully he doesn't have a whole bunch of kids outside of wet lot where his wife's going to leave him his ass going to be homeless on skid row. But black folks need to make their own movies. They need to do their own stuff. And the hell with these people. If you can't uh, respect my family views and my values, go to hell. Um, and, 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 and that's how it needs to be. Damn these people. Um, where does this idea come from that gay folks are this nice, loving community that's exceptional? And, that's bullshit. It's just white folks that are twisted sexually. With some coons that are twisted sexually that, that are empowered by white supremacy and, and anti-family, anti-life values to further undermine their community. That's what those sexuality coons are. And if folks don't like that, that's too bad. Drop dead. In fact, they are going to drop dead. There's a whole lot of diseases and things out here. There's a lot of judgment that's going to come on America. In the words of Baba Dick Gregory, I remember him telling me this. I was uh, with Dick Gregory and his last uh, picket we did at the World Vision uh, headquarters here in D.C., and what he said to me, no, if it wasn't then, it was another event. We had a bull session at Tasty Diner up in uh, Silver Spring, and Dick Gregory said that if God does not judge America, he owes Sodom and Gomorrah an apology. Mm. And I'll never forget Dick Gregory telling me that. And he does owe Simon Gamora an apology if some of this foolishness doesn't uh, get called out. I mean, you have a country with starving 20 million people to death in Yemen, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they get upset over one person that gets hacked up. And I get Khashoggi's important. But what about the millions, 20 million people that are starving in Yemen? That's incredible. What about the people being slaughtered in Cameroon? That's not even in the news. Not even in the news. Mm. Okay, my, my buddy called me uh, from Cameroon to tell me they burnt my brother's house. They burnt a whole bunch of people's houses. And they're killing people. All this stuff is going on. They're killing people in Haiti. By the way, nobody in the Congressional Black Caucus is doing nothing for Haiti. And I want to go better. Roe Rover Martin, Roe Poli Martin, whatever you want to call that nigga with his little fake ass. Superman S on his forehead. I hope it stands for Superman. I hope the S doesn't stand for something else. (laughs) (laughs) We'll leave that open what that S could stand for. You know, he's of Haitian descent, but he doesn't say anything for Haiti. Really? His little pork pig delivery. In fact, I saw him. Remember Mark Lamont Hill? He got busted. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Yeah. Well, First of all, let me just deal with Roland Martin. You know, Roland Martin was, was defending him. He had on like a, a sweater. I guess it could be like tangerine colored or peach colored. <laughs> and I mean, <laughs> he was so fat. He looked like one of those Kool Aid, like Kool Aid, except it was peach Kool Aid without the smile on the thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. he, that thing made me laugh. He looked like Kool Aid. You look like a picture of when he's so fat. Mm. <laughs> look, 
let me just say this. Mark Lamont Hill, he trashed, uh, uh, what's his name, Francis Cress Wilson. Mm-hmm. And I've been mad at Mark Lamont Hill ever since. He was the one that came up with that concept of Hotep Twitter, Twitter, black men that weren't supporting the LGBTQ movement. He was the one that stereotyped in this Hotep Twitter that you people like you and I, just stupid people who don't know what we're talking about. Mm. So if we support, you know, people getting hit and t- hit in the booty or women, you know, getting hairballs in their throat, that, that, that there's something wrong with us. Mm. And he's also the one that put out the lie that Malcolm X was gay. You didn't know that Mark Montiel put that out there? I thought it was like Dr. Benny Marable book. Well, he said it too. He put out the yeah, Malcolm X was gay. Why'd you need to do that? Why can't we have someone we look up to? Maybe he's just looking but at how Malcolm do you X know? I mean, it's like, how can you prove that? <laughs> well, maybe he wanted it. Maybe he wanted, you know, he wanted the faggot or the bullet. He wanted the bullet. <laughs> okay. I'm oh, never, uh-huh. so, I mean, I'm mad at him. And what are you doing fighting for another group of people? You should be doing it for your own. And since you always promo social, remember he tried to get TV Jakes to come out for gay marriage to say mm-hmm. that. I mean, you like you fight so show? hard for everybody. Like you said, that's kind of strange. Why couldn't you talk about even Cameroon? What they doing people in Cameroon? I mean, he could use well, his platform can, for why can't he else. talk about? Why can't he talk about what they're doing in Philly? Yeah. In fact, you know, he has a coffee shop there. When sister told me, um, she listens to you. She says, you know, he has a coffee shop. I said, mm-hmm. I wonder what he calls. And that's just what? Fuck boys and poets. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. good. Then, yeah, I love that. That's, that works. <laughs> <laughs> he's a Uwugu lover and, and he's and promosexual. You know, I'm just sick of that. By the way, Brother Ron, that film, I don't know if you've mentioned that to people. That film, I still need a push for it. That black, white, and blue, it's yeah. going to pick up now. It's going to pick up. Did you write a review up in there yet? Yeah, I got a review on there. Yeah, I wrote it uh, last week. Do you know a white devil went in there and gave it a one and said it's the worst documentary ever? You His see? name is John. I hope you go in there and write and tell him to take it out. And for all the people watching, I mean, just uh, Black, White, and Blue is on Amazon Prime. It's a very good documentary. If you have Amazon Prime, it's free. Please watch it. Please write a review. And please denounce a little cracker who gave him a one star. His name is John. Ask him to take it off. Yeah, we need to blackball him. You know, I said that he was like a a pedophilia um, troll by. That's why. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make him get off of there. But um, there's something I want people to understand is that the, the, the news and a lot of stuff that's going on is really shallow. You know, for example, have you heard about Trump talking about putting a hundred billion dollars in black communities? Yeah, the enterprise zone thing. Yeah. Oh, well, it's just I hope that happens. We've heard things like that before, but you know what? If we got ten billion, I'd be glad. Mm-hmm. That's more than what Obama tried to do. Isn't that disgusting? You can get a dude that sees good people and Nazis, but they'll put money in the black communities. But you get Obama that would would would, would denounce these folks, but he wouldn't give you anything. He could like call the teenagers in Baltimore thugs. I mean, the black teenagers doing that yeah, pretty well, great thing. Obama should know what a thug is. He's one. <laughs> Obama, Obama's a thug. Yes, he is. He's a he's a, a cool thug. He's betrayed our people. In fact, you know, I was talking to the woman who used to do my taxes. She's a prominent sister in uh, Chicago, mm-hmm. and she shared with me that the Obamas were going to stay in D.C. Because the people up there, a lot of them don't like them. They don't want the Obamas are not necessarily welcome in Chicago to certain black folks. They felt like they didn't do anything for them. And no. it's nice if finally done it, you know. And I, I, I repeat, I'm not saying that Trump is the answer or the savior, but he's president. You know, have you ever worked a job and everybody knew how to be nice to the person that did payroll? <laughs> You didn't necessarily like them, but you want to get your damn check. We don't have to love anybody, but we need to get what we need to live. And we do need to be independent where we're not looking to someone for a paycheck. But in the interim, 
as you know, you're a person that works for yourself, and I'm learning how to work for myself, Brother Ron Hurd. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's a good thing to be able to call the shots for yourself, but until you are really financially where you want to be, it's better to get that damn check. Right. But also with Trump, mm-hmm. I mean, with the criminal reform bill, he's, he's uh, trying to pass through Congress. I mean, that's a good thing. It passed. It passed, it passed it right. Passed. But, I'm saying, but what has Barack done besides, I mean, what has Barack done? In terms of stuff like that, he didn't want to do anything for us. He had that little glitch named Valerie Jarrett. I mean, she looks like Cat Wallace Binghamton from the Kills, maybe. Remember that? Uh, I got to Google that up. <laughs> yeah, uh, his name was Flynn. Uh, Flynn uh, is his last name. She looks like a, a, a white Irish American actor. She also looks like Tweety Bird, a Woodstock from Peanuts. Mm-hmm. I mean, she does look like the Planet of the Apes woman, too. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll let you say I, I mean, I, I have my own thoughts about this. <laughs> I just don't have that in mind. Well, I, I mean, I just, why know, do people got to go away because they say something? Why do people got to go away? You know what I'm saying? Like, if people got this unpopular opinion about someone or something, why do you have to? I mean, I don't think Lenny Bruce could make it today. I don't think Lenny Bruce could have a career at all in this type of climate. What they were doing here. But look at, look at, look at, look at, I'm going to say this. Mm. Donald Trump has done a whole lot in the sense that I have to agree with him. He says whatever the hell crosses his mind. Right. And he says pretty stupid stuff sometimes. And some stuff is on the money. Right. And, you know, um, I don't know if she knew this. Did you know that a lot of people that were trying to come across the border were gay? No, but it wouldn't surprise me given the climate and that we're living in. <laughs> and that's that's the reason that they were trying to, and that's why the people in the media was fighting so hard to get them in. Anderson Cooper's trying to get some of that extra meat coming over. So, Man, <laughs> I, just, I just can't even look at this stuff. I mean, like, it's a clown show. I can't take none of those folks seriously. You know like how they cover the Bush thing? Like, they won't talk about anybody. Well, how can you remember Pearl Harbor? I can't remember where he was at when JFK got killed. But he can remember Pearl Harbor. That don't even sound right to me. <laughs> it's like Richard Nixon not knowing where he's at. I just, the media is not really the media. It's fools go. I mean, I just like you said, it's the grassroots media that really got it right now. But I just can't take CNN and all them people seriously. Or oh, MSNBC. Yeah, the, the Confused News Network. The Confused News Network. Yes, sir. It's like, mm-hmm. it's crazy, man. And, and people got to be honest with themselves about what's going on. This is, this is not right. They are misleading the people. Uh, it's it's treason what they're doing to the to the American people, not informing them on purpose. <laughs> well, guess what's going to happen? I do see some stuff changing. Mm-hmm. I see things that maybe the economy tanks because all these stores and things are closing. I know I'm not buying shit. So I mean, how can you buy things? I mean, people don't have jobs. Like, look at GM. You built them out. We built them out ten years ago. Now they bailing out on American people. Well, I, I I think that uh, the public needs to wake up. They need to. I'm just thinking this pedophile thing is going to be good. Do you think you, you think folk on your audience don't understand what I'm saying? The importance of this because I'm going to tell you. Yeah, because you know what? Oh, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut out that show. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. No, I was saying because people say, you know what? Like if you look at TV, they're pushing that stuff real hard, like inter- the swirling and the gay stuff. In commercials and TV shows, people are noticing that. It's like, why you gotta? I mean, fifty years ago, you could make a show without having all this stuff. You could, you didn't have to talk about sex or show you sex. Know, and you know that this, this is part of Obama's legacy. He made a deal to get mm-hmm. the gay support that that there would be gays and everything. This is why the stuff is mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, it is mission accomplished. And, and he got uh, an intern for Weinstein, and he ain't saying nothing about Harvey Weinstein. His daughter, yep. oldest daughter, interned for him. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then look at how confused she is. Now, did you hear about the guy that gave the sperm for Michelle to have that baby? What happened? He's suing. Now he's Michelle suing? Obama's thing? Ooh, yeah, he's being sued because it's not Obama's child. Well, is, so is that black couple real? Is that real about the black couple from Chicago being the... Uh, there's, there's something going on because Michelle came out and said she got in vitro fertilization. Now, my question is, who gave up the sperm? Oh, you see? Oh, wow. I got to tell you, I'm far behind on Michelle. Okay. Michelle said, yeah, I mean, 
And I never, you know, I think I, you, I was talking to you and people kept saying to me, is Michelle a woman? Is Michelle a man? No, Michael Robinson, whatever. She looked like a brother. Maybe a brother. But uh, <laughs> I said straight up, Michelle Obama is a woman. Mm-hmm. Always was. But, uh, and proof of that is if Obama didn't like her like he should. Had she been a man, he'd be all over her. Okay, so um, and so she's the woman 100%. Okay. Um, I'm not going to buy her book. I didn't buy um, Amorosa's book. It's basically, it's basically the same. She <laughs> mm-hmm. Basically, you know, uh, power sisters that got a break. Um the one thing I'll say is Michelle is silent about all the stuff that happened to black women. Now that she's out of office, why isn't she saying, speaking up? Now she, and her hugging all on Bush. I'm sorry. That's, that's low class. Hmm. What about you know, if I was... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I don't know if it's Spanish fly or whatever he's saying that she keeps eating it. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't trust Bush, man. Like you know, <laughs> with that candy or oil or anything. Oh yeah, uh, you know, this kind of person probably put some nut on it and to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like an Afri E. Newman looking mag magazine character. He's he's strange anyway. Um, and I notice how Obama doesn't ever say anything to George's wife. I mean, Laura Bush. I mean, oof. You know, she has that ostrich skin face, you know, all the wrinkles and stuff there. Make mm. a nice pocket. <laughs> wow. I'm thinking about other places in the world. Haiti, they're still killing people. They're murdering people all over Haiti. Shooting them, assassinating the Clintons. All you Negroes, or no, niggas that voted for Hillary Clinton. Um, Hillary and them are behind lots of black people being murdered in Haiti right now. Black folks being murdered in Libya now. Uh, black folks that are being killed in Cameroons right now is linked to American policy that Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama put together. That's real lives, real black people destroyed. Honduras got destroyed by Hillary Clinton's foreign policy for Honduras. Yes, it did, with uh, Obama's support. Those are people trying to get across the board with one foot in their baby under the fence. Mm. Shoot, didn't you? <laughs> it's, it's, it's just really time for uh, people to wake up. Um, I also want to say that I heard that the Church of God in Christ is coming back to Memphis. Yeah. Yeah. And did you hear, uh, what's his name, um, Bishop uh, Wooten, who started talking about the need for a clean church to begin to preach semi Earl Carter almost a little bit? Mm. That's really interesting to me. Um, you've been talking about churches. Uh, you know, Carter was sharing with me that the Church of God in Christ has shelled out over a third of a billion dollars worth of money for sexual harassment, sexual abuse, and misconduct cases. Mm-hmm. Imagine what you could do with downtown Memphis with three hundred million dollars. Uh, uh, that'd be interesting. But I, just, uh, I mean, you know what? It's weird. Like in Memphis, because um, people don't understand this agenda stuff is real. Like people got into office here. I'm talking about the Democrats, and it's like they're saying that the number one problem that Memphis faces. Stuff dealing with the LGBTQ, whatever you want to call them at the end, community. And I don't understand, like, Memphis is one of the poorest big cities in the country. And you saying the mm-hmm. big problem is, like, where can these folks go to use the restroom? Is this the biggest yeah. problem? I mean, I just like, what the hell going on? But then I reminded, well, I, I reminded recently, like, you know, with the Democrats, it's funny to me. The Democrats not only created the KKK, but they helped usher in the Federal Reserve and the CIA. So voting for the Democrats have been very detrimental to the American public in general. Yeah, and so the Democrats have also created the gay, gay, gay. <laughs> the and gay, 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 okay. Yeah. I don't seem like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like putting uh, putting bacon and, and cheese on a burger, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> That's like the gay, gay, gay. Okay. And it's the same thing here in Washington. They have an office on African American affairs. Mm-hmm. When I checked, they had two employees. Hmm. 
the, the gay affairs may have a hundred, 150 people. Wow. Now, do you tell me that two people can deal with the problems of 350,000 black people mm-hmm. and yet the gays get over a hundred people? I mean, just, it's astounding. And you know what? There's always a little coon Democrat. They're often a lesbian. I'm telling you, black butchers, black lesbians are the biggest traitors mm. to our community. But white lesbians are loyal to white people. Black lesbians are often the biggest traitors, the biggest sellouts. Um, I'll tell you, the black men that are gay, at least they like black dudes half the time. I've never been <laughs> to figure out black butchers like, you know, you go somewhere and the woman's just mean to everybody. You mm-hmm. know, man, which, she's a dyke because she just hates everybody. What is that? You know, they're not cool. They're not cool. They're low down. I mean, I've met some really mean, and they've got all these power butchers. Like, since I spoke to you last, oh, yeah, we hadn't talked. Uh, we hadn't talked since the election, right? Yeah. State boss, she got her ass beat. Yeah. And Jealous got. Uh, the boy Gillum got his ass beat. Um, Gillum uh, showing his uh, wagging his penis in his short shorts for the white boy in the boat he lost. Yeah. Nasty, a promosexual he lost. All the promosexual high profile races lost. Yeah. And I, well, I got to talk about him for a minute. Nasty didn't even get 40% of the blacks in Mississippi to vote for him. Why do you think that is? Uh, why do you think your black folks are going to try to you light skin, you you a Creole, you don't really identify with the little broke broke dark skinned people up in the Delta. You don't want them. Mm. I mean, you excited somebody. I, I bet you Benny Thomas or ben, look, there are like eight hundred, eight hundred and fifty thousand blacks that can vote in Mississippi. Mm. <sighs> You mean you couldn't get 300,000 of them to vote for you? You couldn't get 350,000 of them to vote for you? And he had 350,000 black votes plus the white votes he would have beat. Mm. You know, talking loud, saying nothing. He should have been pushing for the, what, 100? 200,000 felony disfranchised people in Mississippi to get the right to vote. At least Gillum. I got to give it to him. Gillum did support that. But you know, Gillum didn't really campaign in the hood in Florida. Mm-hmm. Gillum could have won. Esty could have won. And uh, Walter Payton. <laughs> Stacy. <laughs> Walter Payton. <laughs> she does. I'm sorry. But I was they were pandering to folks that couldn't vote for them anyway, like this illegal immigrant thing. Why do they have to make that a part of their agenda? The for, they non-citizens. Yeah, you know why? Because they've been told the gay agenda supports the illegals. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's part of their power base, and that themselves a strong. You have to remember, Latin is a strong Catholic church. Thing. Strong bisexual gay thing down in Latin America. Oh, yes, it is. Tis so sweet, trust in Jesus, right? (laughs) These people, think about it. All these guys come up here by themselves with no women. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge right there, brother. How are you going to make it? This is no cooch in the land. No. that's why you have a lot of rape and stuff going on in the country. Trump's not wrong. A lot of people rape and do it. So there's some strange stuff going on. A lot of these people and these gangs, MS-13, mm-hmm. there's a heavy, violent, homoerotic culture amongst these people that folks don't talk about. And they're connected, so they, shoot. These people have a depopulation agenda. They have an anti-black agenda. That's the other reason to push these people up here. And that's what they're saying to us. It's a black and brown coalition. We're all going to work together. Oh, shit. That's non-existent, man. That's a, that don't exist. It, no, it doesn't exist. Jesse Jack's jackass and then get paid to tell us that it, it doesn't exist. In fact, do we really need it? 
how do they how do they treat blacks in Latin America? You know, I think I told they didn't start start counting uh, blacks in the census in Mexico until 2015. Mm. Wow, they've been counting African Americans in the census since 1790. They don't tell the real number, but they've acknowledged we were here. Mm-hmm. Do you get where I'm coming from? These people don't like us. They don't care I mean, they about killed us. Malcolm X grandson down in Mexico. You, know, really, you, know, you don't really know what's going to happen. That's my buddy. And mm-hmm. they killed other people in Mexico. They killed Coretta Scott King in Mexico. Mm. Now this, I, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, so no, I just, they can't do much for me, all right? I'm, they killed Dr. Sevy down there. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not feeling that. I'll be friends to myself, mm-hmm. okay? That's real talk. And uh, they don't do, they're not doing nothing for us, man. We don't need anybody but ourselves. And um, um, also, I was just saying, oh, my brother, this ice stuff. I saw this thing that was so cool. They deported a whole bunch of people from um, Cambodia. Mm. And all of these Cambodians were criminals. Mm -hmm. Great. they, They have... Another 2,000 Cambodian criminals in this country that they need to send back. Mm. That's just Cambodia. You wonder how much criminality is going on in this country, all these people coming in. And AI, so, Trump, AI Trump was always exaggerated about stuff like that. <laughs> well, that's, but they, you know what? They never say it's an exaggeration when it's a black person that's been murdered by the police and they decide to destroy that person's character after they've been murdered. Right. They never have anything nice to say about that person. Mm-hmm. It is true. This is, man. Mm-hmm. So, you know, frankly, all this defense for other people and, uh, and nothing for us. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm going to let you go here, and we must chat. Yes, sir. We must, yeah. We must do it sooner, brother. I, I'm just telling you, all I can say to you is that it's there's going to be some stuff coming up. We're going to be doing stuff around this pedophile deal, and it is going to catch on fire. Uh, please keep my email out there. I don't know if you can circulate my John Lewis petition or, or what, but uh, I would love to have as many people know about this pedophile bill. It's, it's existential. I absolutely mm. need a way to talk to and make people aware that this information is out here so people can organize. Yes, sir. We'll definitely keep it circulating. I mean, I know that people are responding to what you're saying. They're receptive to it because I get feedback from the people. So, I mean, I just want to you know, encourage you in your walk and keep on doing what you're doing to uh, expose these people because they need to be exposed and people need to know. Yes, and I'm just hoping you're down in Memphis. We just have to raise sand, man. We have to raise hell and tell people... Um, Wake up, you know what I'm saying? All right, peace. All right, peace.